We are ready to start. Welcome everyone, uh, the ones online, the ones in presence. For the ones in presence, we have, uh, well, just so that uh, you know what happened here. Meanwhile, we were off. We had an excursion to the National Test Center for large wind turbines. And I think we had uh, quite a good time seeing the big wind in place. But now it's time for small wind. And uh, the, the first uh, speaker of today will be Amr Kedet, probably pronounce it uh, wrongly, uh, who is a PhD candidate from the Perugia University in Italy. We have heard about uh, him also from uh, David Wood's presentation of yesterday. Uh, are you there? Yes, you are there. Uh, I will allow you to. I will get uh, up from you. There it is. You should get a notification. <laughs> Can you hear us? We can hear some. Yeah, you can see me, I think. No, not yet. Here we go. See me yeah. now? Okay, so Hi. Hi. thanks for joining us. Excuse me? Thank you for joining and uh, welcome. Thank you. So yeah, whenever you are, you can try to share the screen okay. if you. So I go ahead and I share my screen. So now you can see my presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is a presenter, uh, Amr Khedj. I'm a PhD candidate at Biruja University. Uh, this is my LinkedIn profile. I'm in the final stage in my PhD. I should finish uh, by the end of the next month. I, and my PhD research uh, focuses on uh, uh, the, the uh, aerodynamics of the small horizontal axis wind turbines. I'm trying to develop uh, high performance uh, small horizontal axis wind turbine for commercial use using bio-inspired uh, techniques through CFD simulations and uh, wind tunnel experiments. And today uh, we are gonna talk about uh, a research in my PhD research titled Investigation of the Effect of a Small Horizontal Axis Blade Rotation on Laminar Separation Bubble Formation using uh, high fidelity large edge simulations. So the idea uh, in summary is uh, getting a blade element from uh, a small horizontal axis wind turbine and studying this blade element in two conditions, in the condition of rotation versus the condition of uh, translation using the high fidelity large edge simulation to check or to investigate uh, the performance of uh, the laminar separation bubble formation over this blade element under uh, both conditions. So at the beginning, I'm gonna give uh, an introduction about uh, the small horizontal axis wind turbine and uh, the model that I selected to uh, conduct this study is uh, the, the, the very famous model of uh, the small uh, wind turbine, which has around one meter diameter radius which is the NTNU small horizontal axis wind turbine. And it's based on the high lift airfoil, uh, Unreal SA26. Uh, and the design table speed ratio of this turbine is at table speed ratio six. And uh, at this table speed ratio, actually the Reynolds number uh, of the airfoil or uh, the blade section is 100,000 based on the cord length in average. And this Reynolds number actually is it's inside the transitional flow. And um, as it's very known that the transitional flow is a very sensitive flow, and it has uh, different boundary layer uh, development characteristics, or it develops different boundary layer uh, characteristics compared to laminar flow or uh, turbulent flow. And this affects for sure the loadings of the, the blade or the lift and drag of the airfoil or the blade element. And as I'm talking about uh, laminar separation bubbles, so I'm gonna give 
um, a brief uh, of, of the fundamentals of laminar separation bubble and why it forms and how it forms. So um, as the Reynolds number decreases, the viscous damping effect increases and it tends to suppress the transition process or delay uh, the reattachment. And this forms the laminar separation bubble. So for a transitional flow, uh, such as at low Reynolds number of 100,000, um, separation bubble actually is the dominant physics and it affects the flow performance extensively uh, more than its effect when it's in a smaller size or a very tiny size at higher number. Uh, so for um, at such low number, a free stream uh, flow cutting through an airfoil leading edge creates laminar boundary layer over its suction side. And then faster downstream when this laminar boundary layer encounters an adverse pressure gradient of sufficient magnitude, it causes a separation forming two zones, uh, a separated laminar shear layer and a dead uh, circulating layer or circulating the flow inside um, the, the, the separation, the dividing the streamline of separation and uh, between the wall of the airfoil. And actually due to the instability in the inflection layer at the separation uh, point, um, it causes uh, a highly extensive, um, uh, highly extensive unstable flow and then due to this instability, the flow uh, converts to uh, turbulent flow. And inside the turbulent flow, due to the enhanced momentum trans transport and the turbulent flow, uh, it enables reattachment and then uh, a turbulent boundary layer develops downstream, creating the laminar separation bubble or an, uh, an air bucket inside uh, the, the dividing streamline. And actually the effect of, uh, of a laminar separation bubble on an airfoil pressure distribution can be seen in, uh, in this figure. And the figure shows uh, the pressure coefficient over an airfoil uh, comparing two cases, one with laminar separation bubble and one another one without laminar separation bubble if, if the flow is uh, in visit, in, in, in visit, yeah. Uh, and it shows uh, here um, that once the flow uh, separates, the edge of the bubble becomes a zero pressure gradient streamline, which is uh, evidenced by uh, the plateau or the, the, the stable horizontal line of the pressure distribution. Um, and then and in the downstream after the reattachment, the flow or the, 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 the pressure coefficient uh, comes to uh, its normal behavior again. Okay, so uh, the laminar separation bubble characteristics and uh, how the rotational effect can change these characteristics are summarized here in this slide. So laminar separation bubble is very sensitive to the flow parameters uh, summarized or uh, in, in can be uh, represented in the flow Reynolds number. So at each Reynolds number and also at each turbulence intensity level in the pre-stream flow, uh, the, the, the characteristics of the laminar separation bubble uh, changes. And the question here, does it, has, uh, does it have benefits or drawbacks on uh, the loadings of an airfoil uh, does it increase the lift or decrease the lift, increase the drag or decrease the drag? So in some studies, it showed that the laminar separation bubble, when it forms over an airfoil, it causes uh, an enhanced airfoil curvature. So it increases the curvature of an airfoil. And this, in some studies, could increase the lift of the airfoil compared to a case without uh, uh, or compared to another case when the laminar separation bubble was suppressed. Uh, and in other studies for other airfoils, 
it showed that the formation of laminar separation bubble can cause a degradation in both lift and drag. So it decreases the lift and increases the drag. So here the effect of the laminar separation bubble actually depends on uh, the flow parameters and it depends on also on the air point shape. And uh, uh, how can the rotation uh, affect uh, the, laminar, the laminar separation bubble formation? So to, to answer this question, uh, we need to look at the beginning at the effect or uh, what it changes when uh, a blade element start to rotate compared to its static position, that the rotation add two more forces to the flow, or uh, two forces start to act on uh, an, a flow element in this case, which are the centrifugal force and the Coriolis force. And this for sure affect the flow behavior causing a different behavior compared to the static airfoil. While this effect of rotation on laminar separation bubble formation, specifically at low Reynolds number where a small wind turbine uh, operates, it, remain, it remains unclear. So uh, here I'm trying to give uh, uh, an explanation about uh, the two forces that appear when uh, a blade start to rotate compared to a static case. So uh, without um, any centrifugal effect or without rotation, the flow theoretically should be going in the direction of uh, the cord or in the cordwise direction. However, uh, in a rotating blade case, once a flow separates from uh, a certain point over the airfoil, it tends to go uh, towards the tip in the spanwise direction. Uh, and this radial velocity component creates in turn a Coriolis force, which is a force acting in the direction uh, of the cord, or it's a, it's a force acting in the cordwise direction. And this happened due to the difference in the tangential velocity between the different sections. So when an element separates it from uh, a section near the, the center of rotation, and it goes up due to the centrifugal force towards uh, a higher rotational uh, section, it tends to go towards the trailing edge, and this is the Coriolis force. So uh, as I said, the Coriolis force points towards the trailing edge, and uh, it re-energized uh, the, the cordwise boundary layer. So the boundary layer flow becomes more resistive to adverse pressure gradients. So here is the point, like if this force will act uh, in the direction of the cordwise, and it's an additional force even at the same uh, flow conditions or at the same starting flow conditions and flow speed as uh, a static case or a translating case. So here, when the rotation exists, another force uh, that can energize the boundary layer exists. For that, uh, we, we, we should expect an, an, a change in the laminar separation bubble formation as there is an additional force acts on the flow in the direction of the core. So um, the goal of this study is to explore the effect of rotation on laminar separation bubble parameters, uh, like the, the size of the laminar separation bubble, the length and um, thickness of it, and how that can affect uh, the lift and drag of a blade section. And this is through uh, uh, numerical simulations using high fidelity large AD simulation because here, uh, we want to get uh, all the details of the laminar separation bubble and not modeling the boundary layer because we get we, we need to get uh, precise details and actual details of the flow acting or the flow difference between a translating case and a rotating case. So the study is comparing two cases, a case where uh, a blade element is rotating and another case where the blade element is translating. And this study is using large AD simulation, as I mentioned, and using also moving reference frame methods and through ANSYS fluent. So uh, one element and this element uh, is uh, inside 
uh, a domain, and this domain, as uh, this as that bind that we are studying, has three blades. So this domain actually represent only one third of the domain, or one third of the whole circular domain, or cylindrical domain, because we are using the moving reference frame. So we can just simulate one element using a third of uh, the whole cylindrical uh, domain and apply periodic boundary conditions on the boundaries. So this happened for both cases, for the rotating case and also for the translating case. And actually the translating case, we can imagine it as we got the rotating domain and we stretched it out to be horizontal, to have a translating case. And as it's a large it's simulation, so it's, it's actually very computationally expensive. So uh, what we are uh, doing here that we are trying to get uh, the minimum size or the minimum length of the blade element that from it we can get uh, precise 3D flow. And also it's not uh, too long or too large that increases crazily the, the computational cost. So from the literature, we found that uh, the minimum span to code ratio uh, to simulate uh, using large simulation precisely a 3D flow features is to have a ratio of 0.12. So if the code uh, of the middle section of the turbine has a length of 46.4 millimeters, so we selected the span to be 12% of it, which is uh, around half centimeter. So this is the blade element that we are studying in, in, in both cases, in the rotating case and in the translating case. And the flow is coming from this direction with 10 meters per second, which is the design speed of this turbine. And uh, in the rotating uh, case, we are defining a rotating uh, speed of 135.6 radian per second. Uh, for the translating case, uh, we are defining a translating speed, which is uh, a multiplication of the same rotational speed by the radius of this blade element. So it's like the tangential velocity or the tangential speed uh, at this element position in the rotational speed here in, in the translational speed uh, case. And um, to get a well refined mesh for large edge simulation, we followed uh, the, the recommendation from the study of Biomelli in 2007, which gives um, the, the mesh size, like how the mesh size should be to get a precise large edge simulation results. So Y plus for sure should be less than one, and DX plus, which is uh, the, the element size in the x direction or yeah in the x direction here in this direction or the direction uh, of the chord wires uh, as as a ratio between uh, its size dx and between the y plus so we we kept it less than 15 as recommended in this study and also delta Z or uh, the element size in the span wise direction, we kept it less than 15 uh, with respect to Y plus. And these are the flow or the mesh details um, on, on the flow on, on the airfoil in both cases or in the blade element in both cases. And the time step, uh, we selected the time step to keep the CFL less than one. And we simulated uh, four NTUs and NTU means uh, like the time a particle takes to pass one code of the blade element. And here we go, here are the results. Uh, at the beginning for the translating case, you can see here, the laminar separation bubble, this is a velocity magnitude contours over uh, the blade element. And you can see here, obviously, a large laminar separation bubble forming with its unsteady behavior over uh, the static case. However, for the rotating case, as expected, uh, the laminar separation bubble size uh, got very uh, decreased. So here we have a smaller, much smaller than laminar separation uh, bubble. 
you can see it at this uh, point, smaller in size and smaller in, in thickness, smaller in length and smaller in thickness. And this is due to the, the, the additional forces that comes with the rotating effect. And here, if we are uh, going to take a look on uh, the, the, the limiting the streamlines over uh, the span uh, in both cases. So at the beginning, this is in the translating case. And we can see here the flow, when it's still attached at the beginning, it's going uh, almost parallel in, in the direction of the span wise. However, the separation happens at some point due to the adverse pressure gradient. And we can see, obviously, that the flow is coming in, in the opposite direction. This is the code wise direction, just to be clear. And in the rotating case, this is the, the span wise direction. To, so down here should be the center of rotation, and the centrifugal force should uh, push the flow in the upper direction from down to up in the span wise direction. And here we can see that the flow is tending to go up and to the right, like uh, it's going uh, in the curve-wise direction, and also it tends to go up in the span-wise direction due to the centrifugal force. However, here when the separation happened, the flow tends to go up, and this created the Coriolis force that pushed the flow again in, in the curve-wise direction. So we can see here the flow is not going back uh, as much as in the translating case. And this is the effect of the Coriolis force for that it created much smaller laminar separation bubble. And for sure, this is will affect uh, the forces, the lift and the drag of, on the airfoil. And we can check this firstly on the pressure coefficient in both cases. So uh, this graph represents the pressure coefficient over both uh, blade elements at the middle section of each blade element. The black one is the translating case and the red one is the rotating case. This is the pressure coefficient versus uh, the distance over the air coil uh, normalized by the cord length so that it's from zero to one. And we can see obviously here uh, the laminar separation bubble effect on the translating uh, case that uh, at the beginning of the laminar separation bubble, the pressure plateau become horizontal and then at the transition, it drops down again. Uh, however, in the rotating case, we can see the laminar separation bubble is very small here. We can see it here, but it's very small. And this actually affected the, the forces, the lift uh, and the drag force. Uh, and we can see that on the lift and drag coefficient on both elements. In, in the translating case, it has a much higher lift. However, the rotation decreased uh, the left coefficient by 26.7%, but actually the rotating also, uh, the, the effect of rotation that decreased the laminar separation bubble size also decreased the drag and also, and, and even by higher percentage by 36%. So uh, at the end, the left to drag ratio due to the rotation increased by 13.1%. Uh, so to conclude uh, the study, uh, we found that a transitional flow, uh, like, uh, the summary of the study that at the transitional flow, uh, the translating blade element uh, showed a large laminar separation bubble. However, for the rotating case, uh, the, the, the laminar separation bubble became much smaller. In, in length and in thickness, and that's due to uh, the forces comes with the rotating effect. And for this current uh, small horizontal axis wind turbine element, uh, the rotation actually decreased the laminar separation bubble size, as I mentioned, and that reduced both lift and drag, increasing in general the lift to drag ratio. However, in other cases for large horizontal axis wind turbine where the, the effect of laminar separation in bubble is not uh, as much effective, what happens that uh, the Coriolis force energizes uh, the boundary layer and keeps more attached flow. So always for large horizontal axis wind turbine, all the studies show that 
the rotation increases the lift and decreases the drag. So this is uh, different than the finding for a small uh, wind turbine element where the laminar separation bubble dominates and uh, the effect of rotation caused a reduction in both forces in the lift and in the drag. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. And this is my link then for any question. Um, I'm ready for questions also for now. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, uh, yeah, there is a question from uh, Ali. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, you... yeah, please unmute yourself and ask a question. Hi, Amor. Thanks uh, for the nice presentation. I have just one question related to the angle of attack. Um, did you also consider the angle of attack uh, and its uh, correlation to the bubble uh, formation? Uh, I'm sorry, I used the connection, so I'm back now again. I didn't hear anything. So if you can repeat the question, Ali. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. Uh, first, thanks for the nice presentation. I yeah. just wanted to ask, like, did you find any connection or relation with the uh, angle of attack? I don't know how much uh, was your angle of attack in these uh, simulations. And do you find uh, in your study that angle of attack is playing a role into in this bubble formation in the laminar layer? OK, so um, yeah, the angle of attack of this case, like as I mentioned, I simulated uh, the design point of uh, the turbine. Uh, so the design point is at tip speed ratio 6 and a wind speed of 10. So this defines the angle of attack. So the angle of attack roughly should be 8, eight degrees here. And yeah, as a large edge simulation, so uh, it, it takes very long time for the computational time. Like it, it takes very long. So uh, actually the only case that I focused on is the design point. So I'm just like uh, studying one point, not, not several points. But like from the literature, you can find that the angle of attack affects the performance of laminar separation bubble. Uh, as angle of attack increases, the laminar separation bubble moves forward towards uh, the leading edge of an airfoil. However, the effect of rotation at different angle of attacks, I didn't study it. Uh, maybe this will be an extension of the study in the future. However, like this, this simulation took like more than a year. So just for one angle of attack. Thank you. Okay. And I think there was a question also from Mohammed. Maybe you can ask it in the chat when we uh, have a conversation going in that direction as well, because we are running a little late. So that'd be okay, Mohammed. Well, so thanks a lot for the presentation.